Hi, I'm Nadia. Hi, I'm Malia. Hi, I'm Namira. And, and this, this is Operation, Operation Tomato Meter. Welcome back, everyone, to Operation Tomato Meter, the classic's most tomatastic film and review podcast, where we review the most recent TV shows and films, and we see how we like them. So today we have a very interesting episode because the film that we're reviewing, um, it matches its title pretty perfectly in that it is uh, extremely chaotic. That's yes. how Nadia described it to that me is. after she saw it the first time. Namira? Yeah, so if you haven't been everything, everywhere, all at once, then you'll know about Daniels' newest film, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. So this new film um, by the Daniels, which we call uh, the co-directors, yes. who are both named Daniel, I don't know their last names. <laughs> so there isn't one way to summarize this film, because it's about literally everything. And and everywhere. <laughs> every, every, all, all, all at, at once. once. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about, um, in, its, in, in a nutshell, it's about a middle-aged woman named Evelyn Wang who is thrown into this absurd plotline of a multiverse um, in which there's many different parallel universes uh, where every decision that you make creates a new universe. And um, she's able to, well, she and the people who come into her world from other universes are able to draw upon abilities that you have in other universes by doing something crazy that somehow triggers um, some weird phys phys physical reaction yes. <laughs> where you're suddenly able to draw upon those abilities. She has to prevent... Because her husband calls upon her from a parallel universe and yes, he says we have to defeat this ultimate An verse ultimate, jumper. Yes, a verse jumper who is the villain of the film, uh, who is her daughter from another universe. Ooh, and she's the villain mm -hmm. who is going to tear apart the multiverse and so they call upon her. They're like, you're the only person who can save the multiverse. Yeah, so that's a very convoluted explanation of what this film is about. Um, but also, it grapples with um, Evelyn's actual relationship with her daughter, Joy. Which is surprising. Cause Ooh, I, yes. That's a good question to start with. Did you guys know like, from the beginning that it was going to be about her relationship with her daughter? No. Not at all. No. no. From the trailers, I did not get that impression at all. I thought the husband... Well, he did have a big role, but I thought it was just going to be like that other guy that we saw in the trailer. Yeah, I, I didn't... I was watching it and it was getting closer to the end and I was really confused about what it was actually about. Mm -hmm. So that makes me really curious as to what the critic scores are going to be because would they have been able to appreciate the absolute chaos and absurdity <laughs> of the film? So what, what do we think the critic scores are? Okay, yes. yes. Now, jumping into our favorite segment, Ron or not, what do I think? Um, okay. I, I thought it was really well done i personally personally really enjoyed it but going on to what the critics think like alia said some people may not be adjusted well adjusted to such a change of pace film so i definitely think it's in the 90s but maybe 92 90 okay. i personally well yeah i'm just gonna say that because i'm not exactly sure but somewhere 92 around hmm. i'm gonna have to go a little bit lower because i'm more on the track where some things may have been, to an extent, a little too absurd at some point, especially um certain um trophy scenes. With, oh um, my gosh! With some I don't even know if we can say it penetration. <laughs> um, oh for lack of a better word, I mean that, that's that's the best word actually to describe that's it. I don't word. I don't say lack of a better word. Okay, so I think personally it might be around like an eighty eight for critics. I think it's still very high in terms of like generally scoring, but I feel like there would be a kind of like disagreement between critics and audience members. I feel like audience would like love this movie like just for what it is. I feel like critics would find like things to scrutinize the movie for. I'm gonna go higher than both of you. Really? What for? I think Ooh. about a 95. Is that crazy? Because it was a crazy film. When it I walked crazy. out of the film, the theater, I thought that the first thing that came to my mind was that there is no way that we're going to be able to review this fairly. There's no way that anyone yeah. could review yeah. this fairly because you can't judge this film in any way because if you hate it you can't even say that because then maybe you just didn't understand it because it's so easy to misinterpret what they were trying to do with the film and it's so easy to make up your own interpretation and maybe love that interpretation better than what was originally intended so 
I think that critics would have given it a higher score just because they didn't know what else to do with I it. I mean, that's such a good point that it's like mm-hmm. almost unreviewable, this film, or like almost like unrateable because it checks off so many boxes yeah. all at once while having no box at all that you almost can't really criticize it for anything. The New York Times described it as genre anarchy, which uh-huh. I completely agree with, and I think that's the perfect way to describe it because it meshes action and martial arts film and science fiction and romance and, and just kind of romance too and parody of the films within films hello yes yeah and it, it it's meta if we can say <laughs> yeah. that it's everything everywhere <laughs> All at uh, once. <laughs> Wait, we should we have, have like a we should have like a count of every time we say any of those words. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Iris. Iris. You can do that, please. Um. So yeah. So 95, 92, 88. All right. See now I feel bad. But yeah. No. I think it's, we'll see. You, it you, could you honestly can go, go anywhere. It could, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we're we're going off the rails with these. <laughs> okay. Um, well, our lovely editor, show us now. Producer. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, producer. <gasps> wow! Wow! You went 96, y'all! 96%! That is That's... very well done. I'm very pleased. I know I said 95, but I wasn't actually expecting it wow. to be that high. So now I'm really concerned about what the audience score will be. Okay, <laughs> now this is where we now get really this is scared. Where I'm getting be scared. Lower? I can't imagine people not. Because it was also relatable to a lot of people, which I understand yeah. from like reviewing like social media and seeing like people's reactions so not a lot of people really enjoyed the chaos and just the rela- relatability of it yeah how funny it was so, too, yeah it was just hilarious so i'm gonna just go and say that they went higher i'm just gonna go and say 99 for audience i am gonna stick with the safe choice of safe. saying a 96 mm. the exact score because i i mean honestly if it's as long as it's, as it's in the 90s yeah like, then I'll be happy. I will be very content, you know? I'm going to say that audience would have given it an 88. Okay. Not by critic score. <laughs> but, like, just like, to touch upon that, like, I feel like there's a certain extent, though. Like, you can be, like, quirky in a film or, like, just trying to, like, reflect quirkiness in, in like, any regard. But, like, I feel like a lot of it just had no purpose at some point. Like, some of it was just to be quirky. Yeah. Like, for the hot dog fingers. Like, I just didn't see, like... But then the thing that is, when we bring up that, kind of because like, happening. You, like you mentioned that, but then, and sure, I can think of that. Like there are parts where I'm like thinking some, you know, criticisms. But then again, it's like, well, it doesn't have to have a purpose, you know. It's, it's just it is what it is because the whole movie just is like a big like spew of everything, everything. all at once. <laughs> we have to do that. We have to. It just you know it's so natural, but um, yeah, I don't. know, It's just so hard for me to. Like pick something out and be like, oh, it doesn't make sense. But the thing is, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. So, it's very tough. This movie really, it's like it wrapped itself in a very safe blanket. We can't, we can't attack it. Cause it's like, it's like the first of its kind. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a trailblazer. So how can we even approach this? I don't know. Matrix. So Sorry. It, it's definitely a paradox that like the movie itself seems to have no purpose, but its purpose is to have no purpose. So in that way, does it have a purpose? Oh. So will our lovely <laughs> producer please give us the audience score? I'm very interested. I'm very interested. I'm also very scared. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ninety one. Oh. Okay. 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 So okay. It, it was lower than the critics. It is score. lower. It is in the nineties though. At the same okay. time. Okay. I'm glad it's in the nineties. I'm glad it's in the nineties. I'm just a little underwhelmed. I feel like ninety one. <laughs> When, well, I no, feel like we it, got a switch. Good. I feel like it should have been switched. I feel like it should have been close to critics. The score. We can say it is close though. Yeah. We can say audience is low. Well, 91 is a very good score. A little lower. Just like critics were so good right now. But well, we know that like, these yeah. scores do change over time. So, of the three parts, everything, everywhere, and all at once, which ones landed for you guys and which ones didn't? Was there anything that you liked more than the others? Because I well, definitely did. I definitely liked. Okay, so. <laughs> it's so hard to talk about this movie. I really liked everything. Okay. Yeah. Everything, every yeah, er, I liked everything. That's the first one. Everywhere, I really enjoyed as well. But everything, for some reason, just the whole establishment of like where I was going, and you know, the whole IRS scene at the beginning when the husband first uh, introduces himself from the parallel universe, that whole part and just everything was so like shell shocking. I just really loved that part. And then I would have to say the ending was very. I can't say it wrapped itself up neatly because this whole movie is like 
a mess, which is a good a mess in a good way, intentional mess. But it did wrap things up. So, I don't know. I liked everything all at once. Okay. <laughs> I think everywhere, just because it encompassed all of that. Yeah, everywhere uh, did it was, a big Everywhere was the most chaotic part. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like everything happening yeah. in it. Um, everything happening in it. Uh, uh, everything. Everything everywhere. happening in everywhere. Uh, all at once. <laughs> we gotta stop doing that. We Ooh. are... Everything was good, but everywhere was really what made it for me. That yeah. was where my jaw dropped. No, okay. I, I completely agree. I did love everything, actually. Uh -huh. um, for me, everything seemed like a like really like skewed, and I wasn't as interested as everywhere and all at once. All at once and, every, and everywhere had a more emotional aspect drawn to it. Oh, absolutely. Whereas um, everything was more like throwing you into it. It seemed very like mystery, like adventure figure it out also like i think that everything it felt a little rushed i okay. i think that it felt like a little bit rushed because like at some point we're just like immediately drawn into like oh she's in the alternate universe with like deidre dear draw dear draw jamie lee curtis <laughs> as like the monster and i think that like that just threw me into it really quickly without like too much world building, which I think was effective actually, because it made me more interested in what I was doing. But it was just really sudden for me, and I think that like I just enjoyed every yeah. <laughs> everywhere and yeah, all at yeah. once a lot more. I... It made me feel emotions at the end, but like I didn't cry. But like it made me feel emotions, and I was like, nah. I was like, I don't like this because I don't like feeling emotions. But, like, like <laughs> I was like, nah. I was like, okay, y'all did that, okay. There was that. There was one point in everywhere where I was just waiting for like the drop or just like for the movie to take a breath in a way because mm -hmm. it was just like the ball was rolling so fast the rock was rolling so fast bagel but no the rock scene no yeah exactly the, the rock bagel scene was the rock rolling. was rolling the, everything was rolling was everywhere rock. oh it was <laughs> sorry <laughs> so it was just it was just moving so quickly and everything was happening all at once i'm and done with you <laughs> i really appreciated this actually which Again, I liked all the parts. I can't say I didn't like everywhere. It was so good. Where the husband, um, Wayman, went on his whole spiel about, I'm I'm always confused, but I just do what's necessary. You know, I'm a fighter in, in my own right, you know, where I'm just looking at the good of things. And that whole part was also another, like, breakdown where the movie just, yeah. like, slowed down a bit, which I appreciated. So there was, like, a part in everywhere where I was waiting for it. I'm like, okay, okay, can we just, like, slow down? Like, I was waiting for some, like, emotional... But then it did happen. It did happen, and then it made sense again to me. Even though the whole movie doesn't need to make sense. But it made sense. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't say I, everything was good. It was all good for me. Was so um, the death of... Sorry. The death of <laughs> Alpha Wayman in everything or everywhere? It was in oh. everywhere, I think. Okay. Oh, was yeah. it? I think it was. I think it was. I think it was. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. But Alpha Wayman, yo, he's awesome. He I was actually awesome. really liked his chemistry with Evelyn. I thought that they were like really hitting it off really well. Um, a little better than regular Wayman. Um, <gasps> My regular Wayman, though. But like, I like they him. tried to like like smooch that he died before it. I was like, no, that was so messed up. <laughs> alpha Wayman is from the Alpha universe. Oh, yeah. alpha -verse. Universe. I know where is this coming from. The which Alpha is the, the universe. The Alpha verse, uh, which is the universe that was first able to communicate with other verses, which is how this whole yeah. thing happened. Yeah. So he he is the one who can like do all the stuff, and he's yeah. communicating with people back in the Alpha verse. And, and that also like brings such a like interesting plot line where it's like um, Alpha Gong Gong like like yeah the like, the, the, like yeah, the they call him Gong Gong right so like his character in the Alpha verse he's like some sort of like I feel like he's like a lieutenant or like a general at, yeah. at some point Sometimes, right like, a mob boss <laughs> a mob <laughs> boss no no like they run like the organization of like training minds yeah yeah, yeah. right I think that that brings such an interesting storyline because like. He talks about like the contamination of um Evelyn's brain as she's seen um like they do like the hand um yeah stretching yeah. and like she the... sees the bagel and that's what like almost turns her eyes black. I feel like that's such an interesting point which could have been explored further because I think that's like the whole like kind of viewpoint of like contamination and how like she was drawn to like this idea and then she ultimately succumbed to it at some point is like really great world building but also really evocative of the matrix like there's a there's a lot i can talk about about the matrix <laughs> in this movie but yeah 
That's really yeah. cool. I really like that. Also, like, the fact that it's, like, through hands. Yeah. Yes. And she does it twice. So, like, there's, like, once with both of their hands and once with just, um, Jubo's hands. That's Joy's character from, um, well, all the universe, actually. Yeah. yeah. She's just, like, the main that's antagonist. That's villain name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, like, incredible storyboarding with the, with the hand thing. Because, like, watching. We can't, haven't talked much about camera work or anything. Yeah, we this is not that. the we most just, important There's just thing. so much plot. It's great. That's all I know. Really cool. <laughs> the editing, I have to say. The editing, the editing was, was I hope this gets I nominated all the for like were done using Premiere, which is crazy. It's ridiculous. Really? It's really? ridiculous. I just, whoever was editing this, I was like, just timing wise, like everything mm. just made sense Everywhere. rhythmically. Like, the whole thing was it was a lot. Yeah. Also, I was just thinking I'm like, this whoever edited this, it's a lot. And I'm sure there was a lot more footage that wasn't even included. Because oh, yeah. I feel like it's sort of yeah. like us making our podcast is that we have so much stuff going on and they had to condense it into one film. And they might have done that during the writing process, but I feel like there was a lot more to it and it was yeah. cut down because there were so many thematic elements yeah. like what you were talking about um, with them being like, oh, I, I see the good in things. Like oh, yeah, That's something that was only team. talked about during like five minutes of the film. Oh. But everything... <laughs> Everywhere. All at once. <laughs> Everything um, about life is incorporated into this film in some way. So it's... it's yeah. See, I was going to do it again. It lives up to its name. <laughs> we got to, like, hold back. Don't say I that. am holding back. Also, on the topic of nominations, I really, really hope that this film is also nominated for costume and design. Yes. yes. Like, because... Oh my god. Honestly, it is so like interesting to see all the costume choice, especially of Jubo's costumes. She goes yes, through like twenty it. of them, like regardless. And also like um seeing Evelyn's uh, alternate universe like makeup and costume and just like the different like aspects that she becomes like she specializes in, which is really, really interesting. I think that this like does a phenomenal job of like just showing like what a production value can do for a film and that does it like amazingly which propels the story forward it's yeah. not just yeah. there like it really it genuinely directly yeah. relates to like the multiverses and it propels the story forward which i think is just a great to see on screen and b just builds the characters even better it, there's just so many lenses to view this f- film through because in two hours they tackle so many different relationships like generational trauma with the father and evelyn and then also like uh kind of like crumbling marriage between Waybend and Evelyn and then the big one with Joy and Evelyn and it almost kind of goes under the nose but then at one point I was like if you think about it or you view it through this lens this film was also a big like um you know like kind of not I don't want to say coming out film but like LGBTQ like plus film because the whole not the whole reason but a big reason why the daughter even becomes like this whole villain jobo like yeah. yeah was because at one point we see when she's talking about like her everything bagel and then we get a flashback to her in the car with um evelyn i'm assuming that's like when she came out and then like evelyn mm-hmm. had a really yeah. negative reaction towards it so just the whole not being accepted by her mother kind of sparked this whole de- inner destruction and then just whole like turning in on herself so then i feel like that was just such a integral part of the film where again there's just so many like social commentary lenses to go through so like coming out mar- like marriage generational trauma with like her parent there's just so many like ways to dissect it which we said again there's so many interpretations so I think it was like the gift that keeps on giving like it was a lot this is a really good film to watch and yeah. even if you can't see it in theaters you can see it however you can um which we can't talk about <laughs> however you can uh when it gets out of theaters yeah. i don't know if it's going to be streaming anywhere oh will it I just... not even know well well <laughs> anyways on that note this movie was yeah a beautiful yeah assortment of so many things very vibrant <laughs> and... one way to uh, describe it yeah. yeah it was across the board we all really enjoyed it and yeah i think that's a wrap on today's episode all right so, as always, make sure to rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts, the Classics Operation Tomato Meter. Follow us on Spotify, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at THHS Classic. And yeah, yeah. we'll see you next time. Thank and all you. of our bloopers and everything and highlights for all our episodes are on the Classics Instagram, so be sure to go check those out. Yeah, and thank you guys so much for watching. We had such a great time doing this episode. Yes. Go see this film. Yes. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.